Okay, I'll get started. Uh, people, feel free to continue to uh, get your food or chat a bit because my content is not going to be as intense as the previous sessions. Um, I'm just talking a little bit about how we do open source at AWS Geospatial Organization, which is I've come from. Um, I will talk a little bit more about our engagement with Mapley Bray uh, community, and but you will find more information from Yuri's uh, um, presentation about the Mapley Bray in more details. Okay, a little bit about me. Um, I spent most of my years in the United States and Virginia as a PhD student stuck in graduate school. And uh, then I worked for a BI company called MicroStrategy, lead their visualization engine team. And that company right now is mostly famous for holding a lot of Bitcoins. Uh, and then I co-founded a startup myself called Locus X. Uh, we, we exited when we finished uh, the Series A funding and then the company moved back to Asia and got bought by another bigger corporation there. Uh, after that, I moved to New York and uh, joined Grubhub, um, mostly doing uh, restaurant and the uh, market visualizations uh, for internal teams and also restaurant owners. And that's where our team started to use DAC.GO. And I still remember the first time when we built uh, the visualizations with all the almost a million restaurants and merchants of Grubhub onto one map with DACGO and without any lack when people are doing zoom in, zoom out. I remember everybody's uh, face uh, seeing that. Seems pretty unreal. Um, yeah, after that, I joined uh, Geospatial at AWS. It's a new organization. Uh, AWS never had a centralized uh, geospatial organization before, and we're trying to become the single owner of a lot of uh, cross-cutting efforts here. So that includes open source. Um, so it, it's, it's funny that uh, I joined this team. Um, the biggest reason is actually people tell me that you are leading open, our open source engagement. Um, uh, and that means that uh, you, you need to work with the people that do not necessarily like Amazon. And I realized that's good and bad because uh, that means we, we, we have a lot of good things to do to change how people see us in the community. At the same time, there's definitely some historical events happened like five, six years ago that makes people believe Amazon is not a great player in the open source community. So we're trying very hard to change that uh, impression on us. Uh, a few things we did in the past, uh, a little bit more than a year. One, the biggest one is engaged with Mapley Bray. So this is pretty strategic in our side. So Amazon has this internal concept called strategic project. It's usually, that list usually includes like Kafka, uh, Apache Spark, and uh, Kubernetes kind of projects. And we recently got Mapley Bray registered there as well. Uh, what it means is that, that we will get uh, a, a very high level of support and also uh, we will have, it's Yuri there. Uh, we'll have the um, uh, legal and uh, uh, open source program office as a priority as a resource when we need their help and the mentorship. So what we did in MapLibre is that when we spin up the organization, we realized that we need an SDK for our customer to use our service. Basically, everybody needs to render maps if you want to build a geospatial uh, visualization or any applications on it. And we had a few options. One is that we can spin up our own team to build something private in-house. Um, we evaluated that is feasible, but we, we don't feel it's necessary. Basically, we believe that a lot of things happens in geospatial. It doesn't have to be commercial, commercialized, and it doesn't have to be uh, our competitive field. It can be commoditized and benefits everybody. And the map render is definitely one of it. So we decided to take a different path, which I don't, uh, so far I don't see any other Amazon team did this, is that uh, when you need to ship a part of the project, you, instead of building it yourself, you go to your open source community, work with them. And our strategy at the Map Libre is that we contribute everything to the main line. We don't hold any private patches or any uh, commits in a private mirror. We, we do everything public. Uh, lock issues and uh, discussions and the PRs all in the public repository. And also we sponsored the organization, uh, helped them to, to, to grow in a lot of ways. 
Uh, other than that, we, we have, uh, this is a recent, uh, also very recent and very big initiative as Overture Maps. So we work with other companies trying to have an open source option for everybody on a data site. Um, also, our, so Amazon Location Service is AWS service, and we decided to go full open source in our SDK strategy, which means that we put all of our source code of the SDK uh, in GitHub and started to deliver, started to develop everything in public. Okay, talk a little bit about what we do at MapLibre. Um, so we became the first platinum sponsor in 2022, mostly because we believe that uh, the community was very valuable first. And uh, also after Mapbox went closed source, we believe that th this world should have an open source option for people to, to render maps. So we, we become the sponsor and uh, start to engage in all kinds of activities. Uh, first, we start with some uh, foundational engineering contributions like write a small book for people to understand the code base a bit better. Because when you inherit a huge code base from Mapbox, you don't get all the documentation, that all the, the hidden knowledge uh, like in, in the brains of Mapbox engineers. So a lot of things probably doesn't make sense anymore when you look at the code stand alone. So we kind of reverse engineered everything, trying to understand why some workflows were set up in that way. Some of the code implementation were written in that way and then documented everything and published it. So that becomes a very important first step is that that enables more people to know the code base better and then make it more approachable. Uh, before we do that, it's, it's a pretty painful experience if you wanted to add features or address any bugs in, especially in the native render projects. We also did some like code build script and the task cleanups to make sure people have better tools when they come in and uh, uh, fix some dependency issues and also do uh, design reviews when people come in saying, hey, well, I want to make bigger changes. So we also supported other more uh, process-wide uh, change. For example, we, we connected uh, uh, MapLibre's board with our uh, open source program office uh, to, to support them to come up with the first charter of the community. And uh, David Neely uh, is our head of the, the, the open source support and gave the community a lot of good suggestions and uh, we still continue to get help from them. Um, another thing is the fundraising. We, we try very hard to lead by example first and also we try to leverage uh, what Amazon already has in the industry connection, try to just endorse and present MapLibre to our community, uh, to our partners saying, hey, um, look at this project, we think it's very promising and it would be great if you can be a part of it. So TomTom Tom is an example that we basically are talking about something totally different, but then we bring it up saying, we are engaging with MapLibre, how about you you join us as well? Then that conversation eventually becomes uh, uh, the TomTom Tom joining the, the community as a sponsor. Yeah, also some process improvement. For example, we, we proposed, we realized a lot of people come in not just wanted to make a few lines of change and fix a bug. They wanted to make bigger changes. And it sometimes it become really hard to communicate what we want to do. And if you just dump a bunch of cold changes uh, for people to review, people get lost and sometimes just disagree with your change. Um, so we, we propose, a, similar to what Kafka has for the, for the design proposal processes, that if you do a change that is bigger than um, a few pages of PRs, then you should submit a design proposal first. It's a very simple template. You just put in your ideas of what you want to do and uh, get people's comment on it. So you have an early buy-in, then later you don't surprise people and people don't surprise you. Uh, also, we have done the, the operational readiness. What we call it is that it enable more corporate uh, adopters by improving on documentation, testing, release processes, basically telling the bigger players that, hey, um, this project is not just some toy that people plays around. It's uh, it's it's some something real that you can use in your production system. Um, so this this is one thing I'll probably just talk a little bit more about. Uh, it's not closely related to this community, but this is the bigger projects we're currently doing. I mostly talk about it. I wanted to let everyone know how we work with community and then lead to other uh, uh, open discussions following this. So we, we get into this project because 
we inherited Codebase from Mapbox uh, with the OpenGL ES as the render API, but it's unfortunately deprecated. So theoretically, Apple can unplug any time and make the Maplibre native project totally a failure because you cannot render anything on iOS or macOS devices. Um, everybody knows it, but it's a very big change. It's very hard for a few reasons. One is that the size of the change is very, very big. So uh, we have up to, I think, 12 different layers you have to re-implement using a different API. And uh, also, because when uh, Mapbox implemented this, they probably never thought that we, we're going to have to migrate to a different uh, rendering API. So uh, we had this analogy that it's, it's like a RAM or CPU already soldered on your mother on your, on your main board that you cannot easily just detach that and exchange for a newer one. And for sure, I was also um, an approachable code base. I talked about no documentation and uh, use the very advanced trick to write a code. Um, also, another thing I skipped is that this is not a problem for DACGL community, but it was a problem for Map MapLibre community is uh, most of the people coming from geospatial or mobile web development uh, background, they don't, they may understand how basics computer graphics works, but they don't have in-depth knowledge about how to make this kind of level of changes. So that has been a pretty big challenge that every TSC meeting we talk about it and uh, we, we all leave that discussion with the frustration and the disappointment that we don't know what to do. Um, then we come in, decided to start to take action and assemble a team. And this is a very weird team, I'll put it in that way, because uh, uh, I, I just quote uh, another manager from Meta coming on this is that we put a bunch of random people working together and somehow worked. Um, so we feel very lucky about it. And you can see that we basically just try to find people have past experience related to the changes we want to make. And then uh, also they, they're willing to join this high risk project because a lot of the agencies we talk to, they, they worked on graphics projects in the large scale, like a gaming development before, but they do not want to take the risk of this project because they don't even know whether they can deliver or not. So Wet Dog Weather is a startup that uh, uh, I think mostly just render, uh, they, they did their own rendering projects before, but they, they're mostly just working their own business, not super uh, popular or famous in the uh, rendering fields. Um, Snayman is a is a agency we work with for a long time for our uh, map for our map styles. Um, AWS is ourselves, and the Meta contributed one engineer. It turns out to be our superstar. It's super strong, and the Grab is uh, another company that uh, actually invested a lot in this field, but they they're in a different time zone. This is the biggest challenge: is that we we talk to them every week, but all in very weird time. Either they get up really early or we get up really early. But we still get their engineers come in to work on the layers that we want them to update. And also we get support from community maintainers. So um, one thing interesting is that uh, we, we try to set up a good environment for everybody to, to be very direct and also very frank about each other's uh, opinion at the same time do not easily break the chemistry of this team because we know we we, we cannot afford losing anyone this is mostly the people all the people we can find to work on this and that's been a challenge but uh, uh, eventually I think we we, we we figured out how to get those people work together uh, also we we to to de-risk the project we, we take a Phase the approach. First one is that we, before we do anything, we follow the design proposal process, uh, write two design proposal docs, and uh, basically just advocate for it in all the TSC meetings and try to get input from the community. And uh, mostly, we wanted to make sure that what we are doing really gets some attention tractions because the important is that. Even everybody know this is a problem that, but if you're working on a problem, nobody really, really wanted to engage or review your work, then it, it's an issue for the future uh, PR merge and the maintenance. So after that, we move on to doing the first phase is run, just modularize the render. As I said, uh, we, we mostly try to create a, a interface to 
to isolate the the lower level rendering implementation and the semantics on the geospatial layer. So th this is the first step of everything. It takes it took about four months to finish without making any metal related changes. And a lot of people actually feel really weird how why you guys decided to spend time to do this. It's mostly trying to set up a foundation for any future changes. Right today we're doing metal, but in the future we may for example, migrate Android to use Vulkan or other rendering APIs. And we, need, we wanted to make sure what we do creates a solid foundation for the community to work on other things. And also, uh, that becomes a pretty good opportunity to warm up the team so that they can uh, iterate on how they work together, manage each other's work, and uh, review and uh, uh, merge the codes. Um, after that, right now we are on phase two, we're moving to using Metal. So we, we're, we're gonna have a very simple direct uh, implement first and then start to go for uh, indirect implementation. And then after that, we will go for uh, more like GPU and multi-threading optimizations. Uh, so we've finished the first two phases already and uh, right now in phase two and uh, we are Surprisingly ahead of schedule. This is actually probably the first project I worked in could get ahead of schedule. And also weird that it's not even uh, a, a company driven project, it's more like a community collaboration. So that's pretty good. And I, I just captured a few random screenshots from our, our build and uh, seeing how it works right now with Metal. Okay, uh, told a few stories that not super relevant. I uh, appreciate your engagement so far. So uh, I put the slides here as the end is that, uh, just to explain to you guys why I'm here. So first is that in general, AWS Geospatial trying to connect with more communities and to try to uh, look for opportunities that we can contribute and also support communities. At the same time, we will advocate for uh, different tools to our customer. For example, we, we believe DeckGL and the whole VSGL uh, ecosystem is a very valuable system for our customers wanted to build uh, geospatial applications. So we want to advocate for it. And uh, we already have plans to uh, join the community and uh, build some uh, code examples to uh, recommend our customer using it. Uh, but I'm not allowed to talk more details about it. So, um, and also I, I, I want to be here to personally uh, see everybody because I've been using DACGL since 2018. So as a long time user, I, I, I feel I, I I'll be honored to, to meet with everybody here. Uh, also, uh, I'm happy to connect with you if, you're happy, if you wanted to chat about uh, how we work with open source community and how we handle corporate support for open source community because there's a there's a a constant topic coming up is that why are you guys doing this? Do you have any hidden agenda or any like evil plan? Eventually, you're gonna break us. So I can say at least for the work I work in, I, I don't see that. People definitely have business interests, but they want to see the community grow, and it's definitely a shared interest. And uh, also, uh, if you have a specific topic you wanted to share about your VSGL experience or how do you think Amazon and AWS can potentially help the community? I'm happy to listen to the idea and then uh, bump up to our leadership and drive some changes here. Okay, that's everything. Uh, I don't know if you guys are gonna have questions because my content is not very technical. Maybe it's a pause here for 30 seconds in case anybody wanted to ask anything. Thanks.